everyone. Welcome to <laughs> Diverse Diversity. What, what's going on? <laughs> no, not you again. Leave me alone. Don't worry, sweet bird. It'll all be over soon. You are getting sleepy. Very sleepy. N no, please. Uh, I, I, uh, uh, very good. Now, go make me a sandwich, little bird. Be gone. Yes, master. Oh, hello, goblins and ghouls. It's that time of year again. Scared yet? <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Diversity of Life with me, Mad Nasty. <laughs> if it wasn't clear what just transpired, I performed a smidge of hypnosis on poor Nasty. Hypnosis is generally defined as an altered state of consciousness in which someone's focus becomes more direct, and they fall into a state of suggestion where they are more likely to respond to certain instructions or stimulus, i.e. willing to make somebody a sandwich. Hypnosis has deep roots in human culture, falling on a strange line between the supernatural and scientific. The term was coined in 1820, derived from the phenomenon of neurohypnotism, or nervous sleep, a sluggish state used in therapy to aid in relaxation and memory recall. The term became popular by works such as Edgar Allan Poe's The Facts in the Case of M. Valdemar in 1845, in which a dying patient is kept on the precipice of death via hypnosis. While this is a work of fiction, this story and those like it caused a craze in the understanding of the extent of hypnosis. Just what can you make a person do? That's a tricky one. While we know you can enter a person into this state, and it's used quite commonly in therapy and psychology to help patients relax, just how suggestible a person is varies greatly between person to person. This is likely due to a mix of upbringing, neurobiology, and each person's comfort with being hypnotized. But the exact roots of hypnosis in the mind are entirely unknown. Spooky. That being said, we do know about one aspect of gnosis deeply rooted in biology. Catalepsy is a state of immobility often caused during an animal's fight or flight response. This biological phenomenon happens because this state often tricks the predator into thinking an animal is already dead, allows prey to hide in plain sight, and dulls the nerves to protect the mind of the organism in case of physical harm. The neat thing is that some animals are pretty easily put into this hypnotic state. For example, if you lay a chicken down and draw a line two feet in front of its beak, you can put it into this catalepsy state. They won't move, they'll just lie there and look at the line. Kinda creepy. Even the mightiest animals have their weakness. If you turn an alligator on its back, extend its neck, and clamp its mouth shut, it will enter a catalepsy state. Many people think that a snake's motion or their eyes are hypnotic, but the root of that myth is quite different. The motion of a snake charmer and their instrument puts a snake into a hypnotic state. Female spiders hypnotize males by stroking their bellies, immobilizing them, and then mating and eating them. Catalepsy can even be accomplished in humans. Often, if a human is restrained and given a stimulus to focus on, they will go into this catalepsy hypnosis. And, evidently, it's quite easy to put a colorful bird like Nasi into a hypnotic state with just a simple pocket watch. Some predators take advantage of this fight or flight response to put their prey into hypnosis. That's right, animals hypnotize other animals, and often to quite gruesome ends. These hypnotizing predators often lure the prey into traps using hypnosis. They dull the prey senses using some aspect of their biology to comfort and to confuse until it's too late. Probably the most spectacular use of this technique is by the cuttlefish. 
using expanding and contracting cells on their body. They put on a display that dazzles small crustaceans, like crabs. While this form of hypnosis is no swinging timepiece or instructions like get into my stomach, it gets the job done, keeping the crab in a trance-like state long enough to let the cuttlefish strike and kill the prey. Mmm, -mm. delicious combo, hypnosis and vor. Cuttlefish aren't the only ones that use this mesmerizing display to lure in their prey. The frogfish and anglerfish have an appendage known as a lure attached to their head. This lure does as its namesake suggests, luring in unwary prey. In the case of the frogfish, the lure looks like a tasty worm. As the frogfish wiggles the lure around, it looks like a tasty morsel for some unlucky fish. When said fish is close enough, the frogfish strikes. One of the most brilliant marvels of hypnotism is from New Zealand's fauna. Glowworms produce a bioluminescence from their butt and use the light to attract other insects into a sticky trap. Sticky slime lines the ceiling of the caves that they occupy. If an insect gets too close to the light, they get stuck and become a maggot's tasty meal. Nasty, how's my sandwich coming along? Great master. White, multigrain, or rye? Multigrain. Need to watch my evil figure. As always, I want to hear from you. What do you think of hypnotism? Ever been hypnotized yourself? I've always loved Poe's works, and the facts in the case of M. Valdemar is a personal favorite. It was such a convincing piece of literature to the people at the time that many psychologists treated it as a medical text. Would you guys enjoy it if I did a reading of it for Halloween? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. If you liked what you heard here, please hit the like button. If you want to see more, subscribe. And if you want to see more of my furry antics, follow me on Twitter. Now, I have a sandwich to eat, experiments to do, and a new servant to do them on. <laughs> Until next time, see ya! <laughs>